let's take a look at how to find area and perimeter on a coordinate plane. So I'm missing, I forgot to write the word perimeter here, but we're talking about area and perimeter on a coordinate plane. So really what I want to start off taking a look at, let me get rid of these first notes here, is how do we do this? So remember, a couple of things to remember. First thing we got to really do is take a look at how to find perimeter. So if we're talking about perimeter, and I know we haven't really taken a look at perimeter because that's a, that's a kind of a review concept today. But the concept takes, if our formula for area is base times height, when we find perimeter, perimeter is two base plus twice the height. So one of the first ways I can find area or perimeter on a coordinate plane is to first, to one option is to draw the, the figure. Take a second and put it on a coordinate plane and count. Okay, so you're going to start by going, okay, I've had it put A at 2 over 8 up, 7 over 8 up, 7 over 5 up, and then 2 over 5 up. So then I can count how large or what is the base and what is the height. So my base is parallel to the x-axis, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 2 times 5. And my height is 3 plus 2 times 3. So I get a perimeter of 16 units. Now, I don't have a unit squared or I don't have centimeters or inches or anything, so I just have to put units. Now there's another way to do it, is to use the coordinates, okay? So a lot of it comes down to the idea of remembering what base and height stand for. Base is the horizontal, height is the vertical measure, okay? 90 degrees, so perpendicular to the base. So if we take a look at this, our base right here is parallel to the x-axis. So one of the ways I can find the difference on the x-axis, I could count, but I could also take seven minus two. And what I would do on a problem like this is I take the greater, so here's what I kind of talk about it through, so method number two. And this is probably the more common method because very often we don't have time to draw this, is take method two is to take the larger x value minus the smaller x value. So I've got seven minus two and that gives me five for my base. And then I take my y values, my, again, my larger y value minus my smaller y value, and that's gonna give me five and eight, so eight minus five, that gives me three, and that's my height. So then I, again, plug it back into the same formula, and you'll see we get twice, two times five, plus two times three, it gives me that 16 units. It's the exact same answer as I got from counting or from drawing it. So this is definitely going to be our preferred method because it's, it may seem like more work, but I don't always have a coordinate plane I can draw on. So the idea is going to be to use this process to find the difference between the two values. Okay, How far apart are they? And then use that as my base for the horse for the x-axis and for the y-axis use this for my height. So if we take a look at a problem, I want you guys to try this one. I'll go ahead and pause the video and see what you come up with as the perimeter for this rectangle. All right, now that you've had time to draw it, so again, we're gonna put this in so we have the, we'll start with, well, I guess we'll start with x. The larger x minus the smaller x. So the larger x here is three, and the smaller x is one. So I get two. That's the difference between the two. That's how long that base is. And then I've got seven. My larger y value is seven. My smaller y value is three. So I get the answer of four. So my height is four. So twice two plus twice four gives me a total of 12 units. That's my perimeter. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Okay, Very similar process, very similar concepts again, and it's the exact same information I give you. So one more time, just taking a look at it. One more way to look at this, one more practice time. So we have our XL minus our XS, so our larger X value minus our smaller X value. So it's four minus two, gives me two. That's my base, so two times two. And then I take my larger y value minus my x value, so my larger y, which is five, minus my smaller y, which is, excuse me, excuse me, one, which equals four, that's my height, so plus two times four, and I get that same 12 units from the previous problem. Different coordinates, but same units. 
All right, now, one step further, why don't you try this one and see if you can find the perimeter of this rectangle. Then we'll take a look at a less traditional shape. Pause the video and see what you come up with. All right, so again, x values 3 minus 1, so xl minus xs. 3 minus 1, so it gives me an air, a base of 2. And then 7 minus 0 for y large minus y small gives me 7. So that's my height. So again, 2 times the base, which is 2, plus 2 times the height, which is 7, equals my perimeter. So perimeter is equal to 18 units. All right. Now let's look at a non-traditional method. What if I have a compound shape made up of multiple different shapes? It's not a rectangle, it's not a trapezoid, it's not a parallelogram, it's not a square, it's multiple different shapes. Well, for perimeter, it doesn't matter, okay? For perimeter, from this point to this point, whether it's down here or up here is the same on all points, okay? So we're still gonna use our same process of x larger minus x smaller. So in this case, it's 11 minus zero gives me 11 for my base. And the same thing here, so again, from my y larger long, to my y smaller, gives me 10 minus zero gives me a possible 10 for the height. So now that's not quite true, but if I can find my perimeter from here, two times 11 plus two times 10, it gives me 42 units. Now I'm not quite done, okay? What I need to do is it read this, oh, now I have a scale problem, just like our last problem. Like our last lesson, we talked about scale and each box might stand for something else. So if I've got 42 units and each of those units is 200, I'm gonna multiply the scale times the perimeter. And I get 8,400. All right, just like the last one said, it was 8,400. We take a look at it. And this time we're gonna have units again. So that's how wide the perimeter, if they were going to fence the zoo, they would need to put 8,400 units of whatever, in this case, we actually can go past units and go, okay, it's feet. 8,400 feet of, of fencing to go around the zoo. Now taking a look at this next one, it's your turn to try the same thing. Now a table skirt, and you may not know what that is, but it's just like a bed skirt. It's a, it's a thing that goes around the outside of your bed or around the outside of your table so you can't see the legs or can't see underneath it. Okay, so take a second using our method, pause the video and find out how many inches it would take for the table, how many inches of table skirt would be needed for the table. All right, so let's take our same process. So we take our x large minus x small, so three minus zero, gives me a base of three. And then I take eight minus zero, and that gives me my y large minus y small, gives me eight for my height, so two times three plus two times eight gives me 22 units. And this time, each unit stands for 12 inches, so 12 times 22 gives me 44, add the zero, 220, 264, in this case, inches needed to go ahead and go around the table. So I need a pretty long table skirt to make it around this table. Now let's switch gears and look at look at um, area. So area, we're going to talk more about questions like the beginning of number four today or this week on block day. But right now we're going to look at this one and kind of just break this down. So how do I find area? Well, since I have two different shapes, I'm going to have to find my area twice. I've got a rectangle, which is base times height. And I have a trapezoid, which is one half of base one plus base two times height. So if I find the area down here, my base, I can just count it. One, two, three, four, five. So my five, my height is one, two. So my area of this shape is 10. Now over here, I've got base one being one, two, three, four. Put my one half here. Uh, one, two, three for my second one, my height again being two. So half of 14 is seven. Now if I have two of those shapes and they seem to be together, I'm gonna say it's 17 units. Okay, so really your key is to find, oh sorry, unit squared, my mistake. Uh, find what shape you have, 
count the diff the pieces you need, whether it's the base, the height, or base, or both bases and the height, to figure out what you need to plug into your formula. So pause the video and figure out how to find this problem. Figure out the area on this one. All right, so again, trapezoid, one half, base one plus base two times the height. That gives me my formula, that's my area. So I've got my base one being eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My base two being one, two, three, four, five, six. My height being four. So eight plus six is 14. Half of 14 is seven, seven times four is 28 units squared. Okay, good job on that one. All right, last one we're gonna try. Now let's try taking a look at it when we have vertices. So if I, this time I want you to graph it, classify it, then find the area. So let's take a look at this. So we know that a coordinate ordered pair is x, y. So it says to the right two, up five. That's my point A. Point B is to the right two, up eight. That's point B. Point C is to the right five, up eight. Point C. So I'm gonna connect my dots. So first things first, it's a triangle. And that's what we've had to figure out on the previous ones. So that tells me my formula is one half base times height. So if I put this in one half, my base is going parallel to the x axis at one, two, three. My height is parallel to the y axis. So that's three. So three times three is nine. Half of nine is four and a half units or four and five tenths units squared. All right, it's your turn to give this one a try. Graph it, classify it, and then find the area of the figure. Pause the video, and then when you're done, you can check and see what you came up with. All right, so the first thing you do is graph. One over eight up puts right here, that's E. Eight over eight up, that puts us right here for F. G is six over one up, G. And three over one up is H. So again, we're going to connect the dots. Excuse my inability to draw a perfect straight line. And that means I have a trapezoid. Okay, so that's my first one I need. So that tells me it's one half of base one plus base two times height. So I can find all these things. So one half of three, one, two, three for my base one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for base two. My height is one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So half of, so one half of three plus seven is 10, half of 10 is five, five times seven is 35 units squared. All right, so we can see how we work these problems. If you have questions, please reach out and I'd be happy to help you on these. If not, I'll see you tomorrow when we get to work on compound area problems.